Looking for a reliable VPN? Securely access apps, websites, entertainment, and more with NordVPN. With over 5,100 servers worldwide, all your data stays safe behind a wall of next-generation encryption. Work, browse, or use social media platforms safely. All at a price you can afford. Get NordVPN today. Today's episode is called, The Cannonball Bookmobile. Uncle Joe, and the other fellows, fall for a visiting librarian, Betty White, who takes Janet's advice, and makes the cannonball a bookmobile. Billy Joe sings an excerpt of I Enjoy Being a Girl. Original air date, February 1, 1969. three times in one week. When did you do that? I, uh, well, I'm going as soon as she accepts. <laughs> Crying out loud. Can't you yahoos get it through your skulls? She's not interested in you. She's a doc. That's all she's got on her mind. Well, doggone it. When she's the only decent-looking single woman around, you got to keep trying. Yeah, we're only bachelors by default. <laughs> plain to see you two don't know anything about handling women. And you do? Hey, who's that? Ding-ding. Hey, that is what I call a female. Me too. Wowee. What about you, Joe? What about me what? Ain't that what you call a female? Yeah. Here, hold that under your chin. I don't want you to draw all over my floor. Come on. You guys know me. When it comes to women, I can take them or leave them. Well, if you ever get near one like that, you better leave her. She's too much for you. Are you kidding? I know exactly how I'd handle that dame. Oh, sure you do. Tell us how, Joe. Well, it'll only work with a guy like me. I'm in favor of treating him rough and tough at the beginning. Muss him up a little. Let him know who's boss. That's how you do it, huh? Right. Well, here's your chance, Joe. She's heading this way. Where do you start mussing, Joe? Right away? Well, I... Uh, you better use your back room, Bert. All right, Joe. It's out of order. I better be leaving. See you later, fellas. <laughs> Could you help me? Yes, ma'am. I'm trying to 
trying to find a place called the Shady Rest Hotel. No kidding. Hey, you must be the friend of Janet, or Doc Craig. Well, yes, my name's Colby, Adele Colby. I'm Joseph Carson, general manager of the Shady Rest. Well, how fortunate I ran into you. Yeah, ain't it? <laughs> oh, like a peppermint? Thank you. <laughs> Some are up and up, offering her candy. <laughs> He's tough, all right. <laughs> mm, say, that's a good mint. <coughs> I swallowed the wrong way. <laughs> what can I do to help? Patch your back? <coughs> Harder. <coughs> Holy smoke, did you see that? He really does treat him rough. Hey, she likes him. You know, you're very quick to react. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't do that very often. I'm going to see what's up. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Is this fella giving you trouble? Well, I saw him hit you. Oh, that. It was just what I needed. So we'll be seeing you, stranger. Stranger? <laughs> now, the first thing we'll do... Ma'am? Joe? Why, howdy, ma'am. I was just passing by. Oh, boy. Okay. Miss Colby, this is Bert Smedley. How do you do? This here is Sam Drucker. Hello. This is Miss Adele Colby, friend of Doc Craig's. It is Miss, isn't it? It is. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse us, I'm escorting Miss Colby to the Shady Rest. It was nice meeting you. Uh, nice meeting you. Oh, this is such a charming place. Quaint, homey, and so comfortable. Well, I love it. I've only been here a few months, but it feels as though I've always lived here. Of course, there's not a great deal of excitement. Nothing much happens. <laughs> well, we librarians don't expect too much in the way of excitement. One sugar, please. Speaking of work, what are your plans here? To start a library. We have the books, we have the funds. Now we need a location. That's where I come in. Any ideas? Well, as a matter of fact, Yes, I might have a suggestion. Oh, hello, Uncle Joe. Good afternoon, ladies. Don't let me interrupt. Just have to check my register. I'm the GM here. That's general manager. You told me. <laughs> Billy Joe. Yes, Uncle Joe? Well, what's the big occasion? There's no big occasion. I just decided to wear one of my four suits. Oh? I see. <laughs> what would you want me for, Uncle Joe? There's no entry here for three days. How do you explain that? Well, we haven't had any guests. Oh. <laughs> Dismissed. Yes, sir. <laughs> like to keep my help on their toes. <laughs> well, I can't linger, ladies. Got to go check my airline. That's the Carson Elliott. I'm the GM. That's the, uh... That's general manager. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe you've made a conquest. Oh, he's just being hospitable. Not when he wears his ice cream suit. It's more than hospitality when he brings that out of mothballs. <laughs> oh, hi there, Doc. Well... Hello there. Hello. Mr. Smedley, is it? Bert. What can we do for you, Bert? Anything. I beg your pardon? I, oh, oh, I, I needed to see you, Doc. I got that real bad sprain in my clipping wrist. Oh, I better take a look at it. Would you care to step into my office? Oh, oh no, no, no. It's not that serious. You can just check on it here. All right. Well, how do you like it here so far? Well, I just got here. I haven't seen much yet. Oh, I can show you everything. It does seem a bit stiff. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I can take you all around in my Hudson Hornet. <laughs> that would be lovely. How much could you move it before? Huh? Oh, this? Oh, well, before it was... Uh... <laughs> well, you cured it. 
I'll send you a bill. <laughs> Never mind. I'll take it out in haircuts. Hi there. Just delivering your grocery order. You came all the way out here just to deliver one can of peas? <laughs> no trouble. I just swung by on my way home. <laughs> but you live in the back of your store. Uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, sometimes the longest way is the shortest way home, as they say. Well, they do say that, do they? <laughs> well, why don't you sit down and have some coffee with us? Uh, that is, if you have time. Oh, I guess I have time. <laughs> what about you, Bert? Oh, I got time, too. <laughs> Janet, let me help you. Well, thank you. That would be fine. Adele, what do you do to them? That was the special whistle. I know. I wonder what's going on. We haven't had a whistle like that since Howard Hughes was here. Howard Hughes never came here, Uncle Joe. Well, Wendell thought it was him. This guy had on a wrinkled suit and wore tennis shoes. It's only an $800 million mistake. <laughs> Dr. Craig, something special's going on down at the Cannonball. Come on and go with us. Yes, I heard the whistle. I'll be right with you. Late as usual. We know the train's in. Don't talk like that, Uncle Joe. He's sensitive. I'm just trying to keep him on the ball, that's all. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Automobile. Just what we needed. Isn't that great? How about that? <laughs> well, no wonder you blew the special whistle, Wendell. Yes, ma'am. The valley didn't have a library, so we're bringing the library to them. I think it's a wonderful idea. And now presenting the librarian of our book movie. Miss Adel Cole. Oh. <laughs> Just step aboard, folks, and pick out any books you wish. And don't mind the goat. I have to deliver him up the line for Ben Miller. <laughs> go ahead, folks, go ahead. Oh, Adele, this is Isn't more great. great. Well, this could oh. be the best thing that ever happened to the valley. Don't give me credit. It was Janice's idea. With all these books, did you really work this time? Well, you mean it's been tried before? Oh, about four years ago. Only it wasn't done on a large enough scale. I'll oh, say not. The first stop was the Turlock family with their 14 kids, and they took out the entire library. <laughs> oh, 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 to rush you folks, but we should be moving along. Well, just, just a second, Wendell, okay? Get our books. Well, Wendell. Yes, Joe? Could you hold it for about five minutes so as I can knock off War and Peace? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was him, Joe, not me. <laughs> no, we've got to be going. There are other people waiting along the line. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Adele. Bye See bye. you later. Bye, Janet. Billy, Bobby. I know what I'll do. I'll just stay on the train and finish my reading. It's strictly up to you, Joe. Oh, Miss Colby, would you like to ride in the coach? It would be a lot more comfortable. Hey, that's a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs, but I haven't finished checking all the books and making out file cards for them. Oh, suit yourself. You coming, Joe? No. I think I'll stay here near the books. By power reading, I'll probably finish off this whole shelf before we get to Hooterville. <laughs> oh! Bye, Wendell. Bye, Wendell. Boy, has that uncle of yours got it bad. Has he? I think the last book he read was The Rover Boys at Sunnybrook Farm. <laughs> that was Rebecca. Oh, is she there, too? Sounds like a fun farm. <laughs> I thought you had a barber shop to run. Things are a little slow. 
Decided to close up for the rest of the day. Better give me a package of Sen Sen. <laughs> Looks like you're up to no good. <laughs> You had a store to run. Things are a little slow. Decided I'd close up for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh, hello, Bert, Sam. You going someplace? Huh? Uh, wedding, courthouse, funeral? No, no, nothing like that. Does a fella have to have a reason to get dressed up? No, but during the week it does raise a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you do, Miss Colby? So nice to see you. Well, thank you, Mr. Smith. Why, you make a lovely librarian. Oh, Mr. Drucker. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, get your books checked out. We have other stops to make along the line. Uh, well, I, uh, I think I'll read my book here. You don't mind, do you, Miss Colby? Oh, no, that's perfectly all right, Mr. Drunker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good idea. Nothing like the quiet and solitude of a baggage car to get some good reading done. <laughs> Here you go, precious. Now you soak up some of that good sun. Well, hi, what are you doing here? I'll tell you what, I have a lot of work to do inside, so why don't you stay outside and babysit for me, okay? What? What was that for? Well, hi. Uh. My new babysitter. Well, did you discuss price with him? I think he'll settle for a steak bone. Well, why don't you start with a soup bone and kind of meet him halfway? <laughs> hey, guess who I saw over in Riverdale? I wouldn't know. Your Uncle Joe. What was he doing way over there? Well, when I saw him, he was coming out of a barber shop. A barber shop? What's wrong with Bert's barber shop? Bert. You mean this thing with Adele has gone that far? Yeah. I guess Joe's afraid if he goes into Bert's for a trim, he's liable to lose an ear. Oh, this is awful. I wonder how it stands between Sam Drucker and Uncle Joe. Now, hear this. There'll be no more trading with Sam Drucker. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you can't be serious. That means we have to go all the way to Pixley or Crabwell Corners for our groceries. I don't care if you have to go to Hong Kong. <laughs> We've got a love triangle going on in the valley. Quadrangle. Remember, Bert the Barber's in on it, too. And all called by my sweet, unassuming little friend, Adele. Yeah, she's doing okay for a librarian. <laughs> but I hate to see what's happening to Uncle Joe and his two best friends. I'm not too pleased about that, either. Hey, what if you talk to Adele? Oh, no, Billy Joe. No, there are two rules in life I've learned to live by. One, never discuss my patience with others. And two, don't mess with Dan Cupid when it concerns others. <laughs> I talk on the telephone for hours With a pound and half of cream upon my face I'm strictly a female, female And my future, I hope, will be in the home of a brave and free male Who'll enjoy being a guy Having a girl like me Well, what do you think? Is that all? Well, I thought I at least deserved a standing ovation. <laughs> there, that's better. Where's Uncle Joe? Where he usually is these last few days, down at the shady rest stop waiting for the cannonball to come in. He's having a pretty long wait. The cannonball's already an hour and a half late. <laughs>
and we will sit upon the rocks, seeing the shepherds feed their flocks by shallow rivers to whose falls melodious birds sing madrigals. And I will make thee beds of roses and a thousand fragrant posies, a cap of flowers and a kirtle, embroidered all with the leaves of myrtle, a gown made of the finest wool, which from our pretty lambs we pull, fair lined slippers for the cold, with buckles of the purest gold, a belt of straw and ivy, buds with coral clasps and amber studs and if these pleasures may be move come live with me and be my Lou <laughs> Lou <laughs> the shepherd swain shall dance and sing for thy delight each May morning if these delights <laughs> then live with me and be my loom. I see that, and raise you one. Great job. I'll call. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, Wendell. Shall I call Miss Colby for you? If you would, please. Adele? Good evening, Wendell. Good evening. For you, Abel. Well, thank you. Open it now. Oh, Wendell, it's lovely. Here, let me pin it on for you. <laughs> oh, it just brings out does so much for it. Goes so well with your... Oh, my. <laughs> Just dandy. <laughs> good night, all. Good night. Uh, good, night. Uh, good night. Have a good time. That's uh, really right. What do you think? He called. She went. It's Saturday night. So? They keep the bookmobile open till 9 o'clock. But don't tell them that. You know, there's nothing more sickening than an old goat in love. Say that again. Yeah, you don't catch us acting like that. Now, let's get on with the game. The pot's light. Who's not in? You aren't. <laughs> 